If you're a prepper, you've trained yourself to identify problems that are potential in the world. But there is one problem which is invisible and is lying under most of our noses. As preppers, this is probably going to be our biggest Achilles heel in an emergency situation. This is something that I would suggest I suffer from less than most preppers for reasons I'll talk about in this video, but still it's something that's always there, always in the background and lingering right under all of our noses. And for me, that's a pretty big blind spot. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. What I want to talk about in this video is the potential for your preps to fail you in an emergency situation. When I say preps, I mean that very broadly. I mean tools, assets, uh, you know, skills that you have, uh, your body itself, things that could fail you, things that you are relying upon uh, that might surprise you. And that's what I wanted to talk about specifically in this video is the surprise element of things failing and, uh, and how we can get around that because I think that this is going to be a real problem for a lot of people in an emergency situation. We know that emergency uh, situations come up for people all the time as, many, as much as there are people that come to channels like mine and say, you guys are crazy, these things never happen. You know, they're, they're constantly happening all the time and whenever there is an emergency situation, whether it's a wildfire or a flood, a hurricane, you know, a crazy ice storm, you know, a war breaking out, all these things happen you know, and are presently happening all over the world on an ongoing basis. Whenever these events happen and a prepper is uh, dealing with those situations, invariably they're going to find uh, you know, issues with their preps. They're going to find out what works and what doesn't work. You know, if you're a wise prepper, you're going to take this as a learning opportunity uh, to try to you know, get things better for yourself in the future. Uh, you know, the, it's not really that recent anymore, but during uh, COVID, that was a great opportunity for myself and our family to practice to see whether or not our pandemic preparedness uh, you know, plans and procedures and, uh, and you know, prep items would actually uh, you know, uh, stand up to the test of the challenge and uh, you know, whether in the future, if there was a disease that was much more dangerous than COVID, uh, which you know, there's, a, there's a lot of them out there that are, you know, whether our, uh, our preparedness plans would uh, you know, be able to meet that challenge. Uh, and whenever you are going through a situation like that, there's kind of a learning curve. And the best way to avoid having a, one of these learning curves uh, kind of coming up and bite, biting you in the butt during an actual emergency is to really be practicing and using a lot of your preparedness, um, your plans, skills, uh, knowledge, and assets on an ongoing basis. And that's why I say that this is something that I think is less of a problem for myself and my family here, because a lot of our preparedness uh, uh, you know, plans and procedures and, and, and tools are used on an ongoing basis. For example, all the power that we use, well, nearly all the power that we use here at our house is all solar power. Uh, we, you know, can cook with solar energy. We can cook with, uh, you know, wood energy. Uh, the light that's illuminating my face is powered by the sun, so it's a camera. Uh, you know, all the lights in our house, you know, our, our water pumping, that's where we get our water from our well. We are living in a way such that if the grid went down outside of our house, we wouldn't really even notice it. We're living uh, you know, using our preps. And that is really, really critical because when you actually are using things, you find out what works and more importantly, what doesn't work. Here's a recent example that I have from here on my channel. Now, uh, as a host of a YouTube channel like this, I'm oftentimes approached by companies asking me to, you know, do product reviews uh, for their, uh, you know, whatever they might be selling. You know, sometimes those are battery backup systems. I've done a couple of those. Um, uh, sometimes they're, uh, you know, uh, bushcraft tools. You know, there's all types of things that I get approached with. Some ridiculous stuff too, like dollhouse furniture. <laughs> you know, companies just send stuff out to everyone and they, they, it's like you, you throw stuff on the wall and you see what sticks. Uh, but uh, the majority of the time when I get stuff, uh, well, I actually will, will turn the companies down because I just don't think it's of interest to you guys. Um, and of the stuff that I accept, it's usually things that I think are probably going to be pretty good. And usually I, you know, I guess correctly about that. I'll, I'll test something out. It seems uh, pretty decent and I'll, I'll share it with you guys. One recent uh, exception to that was De uh, DeWalt Chainsaw Batteries. Uh, a lot of you guys are, were really into the DeWalt Chainsaw platform. You got me into it. I'm glad you did. I absolutely love my uh, 60 volt, tw uh, 20 inch bar DeWalt Chainsaw. I use it all the time. The one thing I don't much care for about the platform is the batteries, the price of the batteries. This is a 12 amp hour battery. This is kind of like the basic, uh, 
the bare minimum size battery you would want to be using in that. I accidentally bought myself a, uh, a six amp hour battery for this and you don't get that many cuts out of it. You know, the 12 amp hour battery is kind of your, your basic entry level, uh, you know, to actually be able to do something with the saw. But the cost of these batteries, the cost of this battery right here is $250. You get yourself four of them and that's $1,000 right there. So that is, I think that's kind of, well, it's sort of a downer. It's sort of like you buy a printer that doesn't cost that much money. It's the ink, they get you on the ink. Um, so when I was approached by a company that claimed that they sold um, off-brand uh, replacements for my 60 volt uh, DeWalt chainsaw, I was pretty excited about it, both for myself, because it would be a great way of getting uh, chainsaw batteries for a lot less. What they were offering was not one 12 amp hour battery for $250, but rather two 12 amp hour batteries for $200. So you were getting uh, two batteries for less than the cost of getting one battery. So that's more than half off the price. So I was pretty excited about that, both for myself and if they'd worked out really well, I was very excited to share that with you guys because you know if I could share you know a, a cool find like that with you I, I'm always excited to do that well um, the batteries came in and they failed and failed hilariously uh, I, I recorded a video on it and that video probably won't make it to the channel because uh, usually when actually all the time whenever I'm interacting with a company this isn't something that they impress upon me but it's something that I always extend to them that uh, I'll tell them well if I like your product I will probably share it with people but if I don't like it I will give you the opportunity to say you know what just don't put your if you can't say anything nice don't say anything at all uh, now if I buy a, a product I have no problems, uh, you know, spreading around that, you know, I, this product failed me and, you know, this is the brand name and, you know, you, know, you shouldn't get uh, this particular thing. But if someone gives me something for free, I feel like it's kind of, uh, it's sort of impolite to, you know, accept a gift for free and then, you know, go bad mouthing it. So it's sort of like, you know, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. That said, on one occasion, uh, I had a negative review for a tactical shovel made by Tac Niner, and they said, go on ahead and upload the review. I don't know why they told me to do that. It was a very enjoyable review <laughs> to put together because the product was just so horrible. Um, and, you know, I put the review out there and uh, I think that's the last I ever heard of them, but they were, you know, Good on them for at least being open to me putting the review up. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link down to that review uh, down in the bottom. Anyway, I received these batteries and they just failed horribly. And these were batteries that had like five star reviews on Amazon. You know, you, you would look these things up and you'd think they were just great. I actually bought some of my own as well. These are the ones I'm not gonna name. These are the ones I was given for free, right there. I'm not really, gonna, I'm not gonna talk about them by brand name, but I will talk about these because I bought these with my own money. They are made by Simple Plus. And these are also DeWalt uh, 60 volt replacement batteries for your chainsaw, that's how they advertise them. I put this in my chainsaw after charging it up, just, you know, topping it off just like within an hour ahead of time, it still says, all the uh, little LED lights on it, 100% full. I put this in my chainsaw and it won't even turn it on. And uh, you know, on a couple of occasions I put it in my chainsaw and it did turn it on, it kind of ran okay for a while, but on some occasions I'll put it in and the, the chainsaw won't even turn on at all. And you think, well, maybe there's something wrong with your chainsaw. Well, I put a DeWalt battery right back into the chainsaw and the chainsaw runs just fine. With the other batteries, these that I'm not gonna uh, name by name, I was doing some video testing of them. I put their battery in and it would run a little bit, but it would barely get through just even like a five inch uh, diameter uh, piece of tree limb. Uh, so just ridiculous. I mean, you, re you really couldn't do anything with these batteries. Now, what does this have to do with the basic idea of this video, which is the failure of our preps? Well, there may be things that you have bought, you know, preps that you have in your home uh, that you have as your plan to depend on them with your life. Let's say that you bought a DeWalt chainsaw and you thought that the batteries were kind of expensive. So you bought a bunch of these, which are labeled as being perfect replacements for your DeWalt chainsaw. You can use them in your DeWalt chainsaw. They're five-star reviews. You have a bunch of these. You have an emergency situation where you need to, you know, trim, uh, trim down tr uh, trees to collect firewood or something like that. You pop one of those batteries in and your chainsaw doesn't even turn on. There could be things in your house that, you know, came with glowing reviews, uh, you know, online when you, you're researching these things. Maybe there are even things that you've used once or twice and they seem to work okay, but you know, you, didn't, you don't really use them on an ongoing basis where you, you're kind of testing them day in and, and day out and seeing whether they actually can persist in, in functioning. You could have items that you're gonna depend on for your life that are just going to utterly, miserably fail you. And that is both 
tools and items that could be supplies that you have if you have pantry items uh, that you have put back. Uh, you know, this is something the Canadian prepper is always talking about on his channel, uh, like these emergency kind of food buckets that you can get that, uh, you know, he challenges people to actually try and eat these things because they, in his opinion, I, I've never really gotten into it myself, but in his, in his opinion, they're just so disgusting. You, you know, you might choose death during SHGF, uh, you know, versus actually eating some of these things. Um, you know, there could be foods that just spoil because, you know, they're not things that you are using on an ongoing basis. With our pantry here, we're always eating out of our pantry. We always rotate through food in our pantry. The flour that I used for making bread right now is about three years old because uh, that is me just kind of constantly rotating through our flour. I, I think I keep about 600 pounds of flour here and we just sort of use it on an ongoing basis. And by the time, uh, uh, it's about three years old. Uh, you know, we're just getting to that part of the pantry. We'll dig that out and then replace that three-year-old flour with new flour that comes in. But we're always kind of finding the edges of what's possible with our pantry. And I've had things in my pantry that have gone bad before. You know, they've just, um, you know, they, they've gone rancid or they spoiled. And because I'm using my pantry, it's not just something where I like buy an item and I just throw it in a closet and I know it's there for me, or I think I know it's there for me uh, in the future. It's something where I'm constantly living that lifestyle. Another example is your body itself. And this is one I think that a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people really just forget about because your body is your basic prep. Your body is the implement through which you are going to use all these other preps. And I think a lot of people really neglect their body and their body's capabilities as uh, kind of like a given, kind of take it for granted. You know, they think about like, well, back, you know, what I was capable of doing back in my 20s, I'm sure I'll be able to do that, you know, when the shit hits fan and like, you know, it's required, you know, that is not a guarantee. That's something else that I am always doing here at my place. I'm always working, I'm always doing manual labor. Um, it's just a part of my lifestyle. Uh, and being able to depend on your body and your ability to do basic skills uh, is, is really, really critical in an emergency situ situation. Not just having the ability to uh, you know, put in the effort without getting tired, but being able to put in the effort without getting injured. Because getting injured during uh, an emergency situation is just, it's even doubly bad because, well, you know, obviously it's an emergency. You may not be able to get to a hospital. You may not be able to be, able to get any kind of medical attention whatsoever. So, you know, just knowing your body's capabilities because if there is a task that's required during an emergency situation, your body just might not be able to do it. You may just physically be unable to do it. And I don't mean that in, in the way that like, you know, you'll try and it'll just be too hard and you know, you'll, you, you'll quit because I know the response to that. It's, it's my same response to that. It's like, well, I'm not gonna quit. It's gonna be important and I'm gonna do it. Well, you know, you, you can be, you, sometimes you push and you push and you push and some part of your body gives out whether your ankle uh, gives out or your wrist give out or your shoulder gives out. You know, there is a physical limit to how far you can push things. And if you're not practicing on a daily basis, you're not going to know where those limits are. Another additional benefit to practicing and exercising is that you are pushing those limits forward. Uh, if you, you know, have good endurance and you have, uh, you know, a good musculature system hanging off of your skeleton, then you're going to have you know, less of a chance of injuring yourself. But if you're not practicing these things, if you are not living the lifestyle now, you really don't know where those blind spots are. Again, hiding right under your nose. These are things that I think a lot of us are taking for granted. And the, there's no easy recipe for it. You know, you can't just go online and look and see like, well, you know, what are the best reviewed products? Because like I said, with some of these products here, five star reviews. Now, I don't know the reason for that. I think it's just general marketing and there's a lot of people that like, you know, get given this stuff for free and they don't want to get off the gravy train. So they just say everything is a five-star review. <laughs> I don't suffer from that particular ailment where I'm willing to, you know, uh, say what I don't think is true just so I can, you know, stay on that kind of gravy train. I'm perfectly happy to hop off that gravy train, especially like, why, why do these people want to keep getting more garbage? And like, they, like what, I, I don't even understand what the benefit is to them. It's like, I'll, I'll keep saying that's all wonderful. Just keep sending me this crap. It's like, why do you want the crap? I don't know. Anyway, you can't depend on other people's opinions on whether th items are good, products are good, uh, you know, even uh, techniques are good uh, because you, you just never know. I mean, there are uh, videos floating around on YouTube about how to do different things. And, you know, I've looked for information on topics and, you know, I'll try something out and I'll be like, this person doesn't even know what they're 
doesn't even know what they're talking about. Like, I'll try something out and it's like, you know, this just doesn't even function at all. Here's two examples of that. One, uh, if you look up how to remove, uh, you ever have like old, well, products like this are actually kind of a decent example of it. Oftentimes they'll be like kind of like a, a soft coating on different products uh, that feels kind of good in your hands, but after a couple of years, it gets really sticky and tacky and disgusting. You know, I was looking up for years how to get rid of that stuff. A lot, tons of, um, uh, videos right here on YouTube will say, just take isopropyl alcohol and I'll take it right off. I've tried that a million times and it doesn't work. I finally, just through accidental, um, uh, well, dickery <laughs> on, on, my, on my part, you know, living the lifestyle, actually doing things, I um, accidentally dumped some gasoline on some uh, polystyrene foam and it dissolved it. And it got me thinking, I wonder if it would dissolve that, uh, that sticky goo on things. So I tried that out and it actually did remove things. Now there are a million videos out here on YouTube uh, that just tell you, you know, just use isopropyl alcohol. So uh, let's say, you know, that was some kind of a life critical skill and you never actually removed sticky goo before, but you've, you've researched it a bunch and everyone says use isopropyl alcohol and it'll work just fine. You know, when, you know, the, the shit hits the fan and you got to remove that goo and all you've prepped is isopropyl alcohol, um, you know, you might be surprised. So even techniques and knowledge and things like that, that you, you feel like you've got in the bag because, you know, you've researched it and that's what everybody says, uh, you know, you can't even uh, rely on that. Here's one more example of that. Uh, uh, I'm actually going to be doing a video on this, uh, you know, myself, uh, because if you've ever looked up how to season cast iron cookware, there are procedures where people just say, ah, oh, just do this, and then your cast iron cookware is seasoned. And I don't know about you, but I've tried, you know, the conventional wisdom on how to uh, season uh, uh, cast iron cookware so things don't stick to it, and it. it, it it either doesn't work at all or it doesn't work that well. And I have my own approach for it. I'm actually gonna be uh, sharing a video about that, uh, you know, here on my channel in, in a little bit. But, uh, you know, there is just so much information floating around there uh, out here that is garbage. There is so much, so many products floating around here that is garbage. And certainly a lot of people's bodies through lack of use have kind of turned into garbage as well. And these are three fronts, you know, your knowledge, your tools, and your body itself that you really need to be ut utilizing, practicing, and exercising on an ongoing basis. Because if you take for granted the idea that, you know, I've got that, uh, you know, that skill in the bag because someone else told me how to do it. I've got that product in the bag because it was, it came highly reviewed on, on Amazon or whatever. Uh, you know, I, uh, I'll, I'll be able to, you know, rise to the physical challenge because I, you know, I remember when I was in my twenties, I, I had the ability to do these things and I'm, I'm sure I just won't give up. I've got that, you know, let's go spirit, which is a great spirit, but you have to temper that with the reality, the physical reality of your body because your, your body is a tool like anything else. And it has, it has limits. We don't like to think about our limits. I'm, I'm the kind of guy that it's like, I take my hat and throw it over the fence and I have confidence in myself that I'm going to be able to make it to the other side somehow. Uh, and that's, that's a fair way to live your life. I like living my life that way, but you also have to understand that, you know, sometimes that, that fence actually is too tall for you and you may just end up losing your hat. So you need to practice these things. You need to live the lifestyle. Otherwise you're not going to know where those blind spots even are. That's it. Super long video. I'm going to distill it right down. Practice makes perfect. That's it. The whole video could have been seven seconds long, <laughs> but, um, then it wouldn't be a practice video. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching. Hey, YouTube preppers. If you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.